Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting Abaddon from Destinies by Lucky Duck Games. Hey everyone, Matt here from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to the fourth episode in this Destiny's painting series and today we are painting Abaddon the big baddie in this adventure and exploration game from Lucky Duck Games. So from the moment that I got this game and I was looking through all of the different components, Abaddon clearly stood out as the mini that I was most looking forward to painting because it, I just love the way that he towered over all of the other minis. That is one thing that I absolutely love about this game, the way that they made most of the minis really, really small so that you get such an awesome sense of scale from this guy. So when he comes out onto the table, we haven't gotten up to the part yet where Abaddon comes out. He is just going to look so, so cool and being painted is just going to add so much to that. But the other reason that I was really, really looking forward to painting him is because I have basically no artwork at all for him. So here's the box cover and Abaddon is that towering figure in the background. And so you get a little bit of a sense of some of the colors that should be going into him. So obviously we have that kind of lava sort of effect that's running through the sword, which I had a heap of fun painting and you'll see that a little bit later in the video. But also you can see that his hood or cloak whatever you want to call it is also some shade of brown it doesn't actually look to be black which is what from his name being Abaddon you would sort of expect it to maybe be but to me it looks like it should, should be some sort of brownish color but then outside of that you can't actually really see what any of the colors should be now sometimes having no artwork can actually make it hard to paint a mini because you don't really get a sense for the vibe for lack of a better word that you should be getting from the mini or even just at least what some of the colors should be as a starting point but I found with Abaddon, it actually worked really, really well um, because just from looking at him, how imposing he is, the massive wings, I could picture straight away how I wanted him to look. So I took obviously that lava effect from the sword. I end up painting that and you can see here I'm painting his hood cloak sort of thing and I'm using different browns for that. So I've tied them into the artwork but then everything else I was pretty well free to just sort of paint how I wanted it to and yeah like I said I had a really really clear picture of how I wanted it to look and I'm really happy with how he ends up turning out I was able to pull off the look that I had pictured and I had lots and lots of fun painting him this was a really really enjoyable mini to paint so, so far I've just started off with a black prime and the reason why I started off with just black is because I wanted there to be as much depth in all of the colours that go over the top as possible because even though I'm not actually painting any part in black, being called Abaddon he needs to be a darker mini and painting over black is just going to help with that. And so now I'm just painting the hood and cloak. And you can see I'm essentially doing a dry brush to bring out all of the different tones. So I started off with the green and brown mixture as the base coat, but it wasn't dark enough. So then I mixed in some black as well to get that first layer really, really dark. And then to start doing the highlighting, I just started to mix in more and more of the green and less and less of the black just to gradually start lightening the color off. And in every layer, as the color started to get a little bit lighter, I painted less and less of the bottom areas of the cloak and just started concentrating more on the upper areas. So the top of the head, the shoulders, the sleeves, those sorts of things, so that it looked like more light was hitting the top of the cloak rather than down the bottom. Now, the other reason for why I'm also basically dry brushing rather than just building it up gradually over layers is because using this bigger brush that I've got, which is an older one, so the bristles aren't as good as what they used to be, it also gives a very subtle bit of texture sort of to it. And with the dry brushing, like I wasn't trying to be too precise with it, except for this kind of fi final layer here where I'm really just trying to pick out the tops of each of the 
folds is that it gave just sort of some natural inconsistencies because I want this to really look like an old, dirty sort of robe and using this big brush with the kind of wonky sort of bristles and just dry brushing really helps to bring that inconsistent kind of texture out but was also a really, really fast way to build up the highlights. All right, so here I'm just starting to work on the sword and I'm just doing a super, super quick and easy stone effect because the main focal point for this sword is going to be the lava effect that I do running through it. So here I'm just base coating it with stormy gray, which is just a really, really dark gray so that now I can throw this black wash over the top and this will really, really deepen the color in all of the recesses just to make them stand out a little bit more. Then I'm going to go back to the Stormy Grey, which is the base coat colour, and I'm just going to dry brush it on, and you'll see here that I just do it really, really inconsistently, just flicking back and forth. Doesn't really matter too much where it ends up, again, because the main focus for this sword is going to be that lava effect. And then I'm going to swap over to Stone Grey, which is just a lighter grey, just for a final dry brush highlight, just to pick out some of the edges a little bit more. I was just a little more careful with this one, because I wanted, well, this layer, sorry, because I wanted to make sure that we had some of the dark grey from the wash coming through, then some of the Stormy Grey dry brush, and then this as well, so that you kind of get that stony sort of effect. And now that that super quick and easy stone texture has been finished, I'm now going to start building up the lava effect running through the sword. Now the first paint colour that I'm going to be using to build up this lava effect is called Magma Red. And I want this to go down as bright as it can because it's lava and so I want it to be bright and to really, really stand out. And we all know that the way that a colour looks when it goes down is affected by the colour that's underneath. And so what I'm doing here with the white is just laying down a super, super light foundation for the magma red to go on. So I've put the white down in all of the spots where I wanted the lava to be. In the actual sculpt of the sword, there are all these chunks and textures and stuff in it so it was pretty clear where it was supposed to be there was one or two spots where i added some extra white just in some spots where i thought it just looked a little bit empty and needed there to be some lava there but yeah for the most part i just followed the sculpt in the sword and so now i'm laying down this magma red base coat for the lava and it's just going straight over anywhere that i laid down the white and so you can see it's looking nice and bright whereas if i just painted this straight over the stone texture that I'd done it would either take more layers to build up the saturation that I really wanted or it would end up looking darker than what it is here so spending that time to lay down that white base coat really does make a big difference here as it really really helps to brighten that red off And now just sticking with that same magma red, I'm now just dry brushing it over the top, all of the spots where I painted it just before. And this is acting as like the glow essentially that comes off of the lava that will be cast across the sword around it. I'm not being precious or anything here. It's just a really, really quick dry brush, just making sure it covers some of the stone around each of those spots where I laid it down, just so that as I start to build up the brightness of the actual flow of the lava, it does look like some light is being cast across the sword around it and so to now actually start to build up that brightness and to really make it look like this lava is hot I've swapped over to lava orange and what I'm doing now is just painting a really really thin orange line straight down the middle of all of the spots where I painted the magma red and what I'm just trying to ensure here is that this thin orange line leaves some of the magma red showing from that very very first layer so that it'll look like eventually the outside of each of the lava spots is the coolest where the red's still showing through but then it's hotter or more concentrated in the middle. So when I painted all of those initial spots with the magma red I painted them knowing that this was going to be the next step and so I made sure that I painted all of the magma red spots wide enough 
so that when I came in and painted this really, really thin orange line, the magma red would be wide enough so that some of it would still be able to show around the edge, just so that we start to get the impression that not all of the lava is the same heat, because the brighter the lava is, the hotter it is. And so I do want it to look as though there are some hotter and cooler spots within the lava. And so to build those really, really hot spots, I've now swapped over to yellow. And so what I'm doing here is just putting this down in just certain spots and just basically a blob of it and then cleaning the bristles off and then just feathering the edge out away from where I want the hot spot to be so that it will gradually shift from yellow to orange to red. So it will be yellow where I want that hot spot to be. It'll then gradually blend into the orange as the lava cools down, then into the red, and then there's that final glow that was created from that dry brush earlier on. So this is definitely not going over all of the orange. Each of the different cracks that has the lava flowing through it is going to have some sort of a hot spot in it. There's no real particular rhyme or reason as to where I put it in any one particular spot. I just sort of, as I was gradually building it up, I was just working on where I thought it looked like it needed to be. Um, but yeah, so just putting a yellow blob down, feathering that edge out, but then going back and repainting that blob just to make sure that it is really, really bright and concentrated. And even though this is the layer with the least amount of paint that goes down, I think this is the most important layer to really bring that lava effect out because this just gives that real sense that you have some areas of the lava are hotter and cooler than others. But I think this is just such a cool effect that you get. And it is actually really, really simple to paint because you are just laying down just the red and there's nothing special to how it goes down. You're just literally painting the red. Then the orange over the top of that, just making sure it's thin enough so that the edge of the red layer is still showing. And then here you're just putting a blob of yellow down, feathering out the edge so it blends into the orange. And that's really all it is. But it is such a cool effect. And... You know, this is one of those effects where when you see it from a distance, it looks really, really cool. Up close, it doesn't hold up quite as well. I suppose you could just spend more time and really smooth those blends out from the yellow to the orange, and that would help with it up close. But from a distance, this looks so, so cool. And really, we paint these minis so that they can be out on the board, and so that's where we want them to look their best. But this really is a fairly simple but awesome looking effect. And here I'm just starting to work on the two bone arms. I'm not going to spend much time talking about this because I didn't spend too long painting it. This is just really, really quick and simple. I just used one of my lighter bone colours there. And now I'm just going to throw the dark brown wash over the top and then also a sepia wash. And then that's it. So these washes are just going to help really, really darken it off because like I was saying earlier, I just wanted overall this mini to be really, really dark. But it will also flow into all of the recesses and just help bring out the details. All right, so now I'm starting to work on the wings and I wanted the main part of the wing that I'm starting to paint here to look as though it's made of flesh, but I didn't want it to just be one flat sort of skin tone. So what I end up doing is a wet blend from this dark brown at the base of each of the wings through to a very, very light skin tone right at the tip. But because light tones are so, so hard to paint over dark tones, I'm just base coating the whole fleshy part of the wings with this dark brown just to act as a base coat. And because all of the different tones that I'm going to be using all have either like a, a brown or fleshy tone to them, they're going to go much, much easier over that brown than what they would over the black. 
So now I'm just going to do an initial wet blend here, just so that when I go to do the final wet blend, I've got that same blend to work over if that makes sense. So with this initial blend, I'm not worrying too much about having a smooth blend because this is essentially a base coat if you want to think of it in that way. So I'm just blocking in the three colors that I'm going to be using, roughly blending them together just so that there is some sort of a transition. And I do that for both wings and the front and back of each. So that then once that dries, I can then come back and do another layer and do a more careful blend because I'll be able to get that much, much smoother because I'm going to be blending it over the same colors that I'll be using. And so it's essentially the same way as how you would normally base coat any other part of a mini. When you first paint it over the prime, you won't get the saturation that you're after, but then when you paint it over that color that's already there, it comes out much, much smoother. The colors are much, much more saturated. And that's the exact same thing that's going to happen here. So rather than trying to get that blend perfect on the first one, just really just roughed it in so that now, as you can see, I come over here with the second layer and I even do another layer after this one because I wasn't super happy with how this one looked. But even this second layer, the colors work much, much better and that blend can be a lot, lot smoother because it's just going over the same colors that are already underneath. Now, just speaking generally about wet blending, one really, really useful tip that I have picked up along the way when wet blending is as much as possible, and you'll see that I'll be doing it here, I try to blend the lighter color into the darker color because I find that if you blend the darker color into the lighter one, it just overpowers it too much. And then all you end up with is a lot of the dark color and then just a tiny bit of the lighter color left over once you've finally managed to get rid of all of that darker color. Whereas if you blend the lighter into the darker color, the lighter color won't overpower the darker color. And so you'll get a much, much smoother blend that also has a more even distribution of both the light and the darker colors. So as much as possible, that light skin tone right on the tip, I blended that into the brown that's kind of in the middle, and then that brown then into the darker brown, just so that I kept it nice and even. And then once I'd finished the blend, you can see that there is quite a bit of texture to these wings. There's some chunks taken out and things like that. At first I did Amanara about going through and individually painting in shadows to all of those chunks and then doing a little bit of an edge highlight just to make them stand out a little bit. But I thought that's going to take a huge amount of time because there are so many chunks and things like that taken out of it. So I thought a wash would just be the way to go. So I just thinned down a sepia wash and I thinned it down so that it wouldn't take too much away from those lighter tones but it just flowed nicely into all of those little chunks and tears and things like that, just to bring out the detail that's in there. And now here, I'm just really simply going around and painting in all of these ribs, which will nicely break up those flesh tones. You can see here, I've just gone with stormy gray, but I didn't actually think it was dark enough. So I've just mixed in some black just to darken it off a little bit more, just to get a bit more contrast so that they can be seen a bit easier and it will break up even more those large sections of the fleshy tones. But there isn't too much to say here. It's just carefully working around, just trying to keep the lines nice and neat. Alright, so now I'm going to start working on these claw or 
talon-like things that are at the end of each wing just to help them stand out a little bit more. And the way I'm just going to be painting these is a pretty typical way of painting teeth and claws and things like that. And that's by painting striations in them. So just lines that run in the same direction as the actual claw or talon, just to make them look like they're a little bit textured. But I'll be building these striations up over a couple of layers so that I'll be able to get the tip of each claw to be brighter than what it is at the base, just to help add a little bit more depth of color, just so that there's a little bit more interest to how these look. So I started by painting each of the claws that brown colour that you saw me use there and that's so that by the time I start using lighter bone colours for these striations towards the tip, the base of each claw will be much much darker than what the tip is. And now you can see with the first layer of these striations I've gone to one of my bone colours and all I'm doing here is just painting thin lines in the same direction as the claw but each of these lines are spread apart at the base and then they just converge at the tip. And this is just helping to give a bit of a textured look as though there's these kind of ridges that run through it in the direction from the base through to the tip but already the base looks darker because you can see some of that brown is coming through at the base but none of it is coming through at the tip. And then now I'm going to one of my lighter bone colours and I'm just going to be painting back over each of the striations but as you can see just here, I'm not covering all of the striations. I'm starting about halfway along away from the base but then still converging all of these lines at the tip so that the tip is now looking even brighter than what the base is. And so this is adding more depth to the colour and will help these to stand out even more because it's going to be boosting the contrast between the claws and then the dark grey ribs as well as the browns of the fleshy part of the wings. So once I've finished doing this to each of the claws so that the tips are much, much brighter than the rest of the claws, I'm now going to be going to a sepia wash and painting these over each claw. And the idea here is that it's going to turn these just a little bit more brown so that each claw doesn't look quite so clean because at the moment each claw is quite bright, whereas in reality they're probably going to have potentially rotted a little bit if this guy's a demon, also just gotten a little bit dirty and that sort of stuff, so they're not, the whole claw isn't going to be quite so bright. So that just helped darken it off a little bit more. And now I've come back with that brighter bone colour and I'm just going to be painting this really, really close to the tip so that, again, we have that dark brown colour at the base through to some gradually lighter bone colours, even though they have had that sepia wash over the top, and then a much, much brighter tip. So again, this is really boosting that contrast between the base and the tip, so that that difference between how dark the base of each claw is and how bright the tip is, is much, much greater, and that'll just help it to stand out even more. And then just as a final finishing touch, just to boost that contrast even just a little bit more and get that tip even a little bit brighter, I'm just going to be finishing off with some white. But as you'll see here, this is going to be a very, very small area, but it's still not just a blob at the end of the tip. It's still these lines that are apart away from the tip and then converges just so it helps with that overall textured look. So this is very, very simple to do because literally all you're doing here is just painting lines, but I think it does add quite a bit because back when I first started painting, I would have just painted these claws in just a flat bone colour and that's all it would have been. But just doing these little sorts of things just really helps to add a lot more interest and depth to the overall look of a mini. Instead of just being flat colours, you now have some depth to the colour by having the base of each claw darker than the tip, but also you have that textured look as well. So you think if you just add those kind of little extra things across the whole mini, it really just makes such a big difference when you add all of those extra little things together. So these are good things just to have a go at doing because, yeah, it does take a little bit more time, but it does add quite a bit in the end. And now I'm starting to work on the final part of Abaddon, and that's these scorpion stinger-like things on the back. And... 
At first, I wasn't totally clear on how I was going to be painting these. I had a couple of different images of how they may look. Initially, I thought they might be able to be like a cool purple. Then I thought, uh, it might not really fit too well. So then I was picturing like browns or greys or things like that. But I still wanted it to be like a little bit different and stand out a little bit from the rest of the mini. So yeah, then I started to picture this cool blend from a dark red through to a very, very bright red at the top. And then all of these little ridges and things like that that are running all the way down, I could paint them in a dark gray, almost black color, which would help to break all of the red of each of these stingers into these smaller sections. And in my head, I thought that would actually look really, really cool. But what you'll notice in the next part is that it absolutely does not. And I think part of that is because it kind of ends up looking like I've just tried to freehand these lines on there and I don't know, it, it just doesn't work. It doesn't end up looking like how I thought it would. So then as you'll see, I just repaint back over it with the red, redo that blend a little bit and then just chuck a couple of layers of the red wash there. Yeah, so there you can see that it just, that's just not how I pictured it initially looking. So yeah, painting back over it, scrapping that idea and then just putting a couple of layers of red wash over the top. So what that does is it does just dull down that brighter part of the red a little bit, which I started to think probably does just clash a little bit with the rest of the mini because the rest of the colors are quite dark and then you've just got this bright red tip to each of these stingers. But also because of the way the wash flows into all of the recesses, it brings out those ridges a little bit that I was trying to bring out with that coloring that I did earlier on. So it basically kind of gave the same effect, but looked a whole lot better. So yeah, these stinger parts are really the only part of Abaddon that I wasn't really thrilled with in the end. Not that I think it looks bad, but just that more could have been done. But I just wasn't totally sure of what to do there. But anyway, good enough in the end. I think it still looks all right, but there's probably other Abaddons that you could have a look at that people will have done a better job with these stingers. But with these stingers now being done and you saw just before I painted the base black while I was waiting for the first layer of the washes to dry, Abaddon is now finished. I was super, super happy with how he came up, especially those awesome spread wings there and that lava effect on the sword. I was really, really happy with how that came up. So this guy should hopefully look really, really cool when he comes out on the table. But that is going to do us for today. So until next time, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.